you know what? I understand vintage cars. That, I mean, that's an extraordinary thing. Um, every year I take part in the Cophill Climb, which is a big vintage car rally. And, and it's lovely to see these old things still on the road, but they quite frequently break down. I'm not sure how I'd feel about vintage planes and biplanes, because if they break down, yeah, that's not a good thing, is it? It's not when you're like a thousand feet in the air. But still, nice to see them flying over the house, even if they are a bit noisy. <laughs> Pineapple gate posts. So why do people have pineapples on gate posts? Well, surprisingly, it's all about prestige. It's all about showing off how rich you are because once upon a time, the pineapple was something of a status symbol. People showed how rich they were by the fact that they owned a pineapple. It's a curious thought, isn't it? That this thing, this, this humble pineapple was once worth more than gold, more than silver, more than pearls, more than diamonds, as long as they were very, very small diamonds. And the reason is because of their rarity. A few years ago, I was in Sri Lanka and I visited a pineapple farm. And this is what it looks like. The plants all grow on the ground like this and you only get two pineapples per plant. That's the first thing to point out. You get a, a main pineapple, one that you can eat to start with, and then you get a secondary pineapple, which you can't eat. And that actually is the fruiting body, which allows you to grow the new plant, which produces the seeds. And of course, pineapples came from far, far away and they didn't travel very well. <laughs> they wouldn't keep for months and months on a ship. Now, the fact that you only get two per plant and the fact they require really hot, humid conditions to grow in meant that they couldn't be grown in the UK or at least not unless you had the right facilities. You needed a hot house and you needed someone who knew what they were doing. And the first people to be able to do this in the UK um, were rich people who had these extraordinary um, hot houses uh, back in the 18th century. And in fact, they were such a rarity, it was so hard to get hold of pineapples that actually only one showed how rich you were. P you, people could actually go and rent a pineapple to use it as a display in the center of a table during a banquet or a ball. Consequently, the pineapple became the symbol of wealth and it started cropping up on railings and on buildings and all over the place. There are even golden pineapples on top of St. Paul's Cathedral. And if you happen to find yourself in Falkirk in Scotland, do seek out the Dunmore Pineapple. This is a summer house built as a folly in the shape of a pineapple by the Earl of Dunmore in um, 1731. Again, just to show how rich he was. It's all quite extraordinary. And that's how the pineapple became a common decorative feature. And you'll see it on buildings, you'll see it on garden walls, on gate posts, all over the place. Interesting, eh? And now a little visit to nature's medicine cabinet. If you happen to be doing stuff and you brush against nettles and you go, ow, stung myself, then look around on the ground nearby and you may well find this plant. This is called plantain and it comes in a number of different forms, but they always have these upward sticking seed heads, sometimes long and thin like this and covered in seeds. Sometimes it's a long stick with a ball on the end. It looks a bit like a, a drumstick, I suppose. But what's distinctive about them is the leaves because they have really distinct ribbing on them, as you'll see when I pick one and show you. There we are, see? Now, you may have been told when you were a kid that if you stung yourself or a bee stung you to go and find some dock leaves. Don't. It's, it's a complete placebo. Dock leaves have no active ingredients in them whatsoever. It's just a big, cool leaf. Whereas plantain, this stuff, which is always growing around everywhere, does contain natural antihistamines. Rub this on the sting and you'll be much better. So there you go. The rose hips are coming in. They still need to fatten up and redden a little bit more yet, but uh, I can see some rose hip syrup in my future. And the sound of seagulls in the distance. Couldn't be much further from the sea here. The seagulls have moved here into Buckinghamshire by coming up through the Thames, starting at the estuary, coming up through London, and gradually going further and further upwards, passing through places like Henley on Thames in Oxfordshire, and getting into Buckinghamshire. I mean, the nearest place to the Thames here is about seven, eight miles away at Marlow. And uh, of course, what they found is lots of tall buildings which simulate the sort of cliffs 
that they normally nest on. So uh, we do have little pockets of seagulls here. Plus, of course, they love the landfill sites. My previous house was in High Wycombe, which is about four miles from here, and much closer to the um, recycling centre. And they used to do a lot of work at night at the recycling centre, probably turning stuff over and, and uh, adding more stuff to the landfill. And, and of course loading up the trains with the materials that go off to the power stations to uh, for the for the power stations that are driven by burning rubbish and uh, you'd hear the seagulls at midnight you'd be lying in bed at midnight you could hear flocks of seagulls as they were flying over all the rubbish trying to pick out all the bits of food it's an extraordinary sound and it uh, quite a nostalgic sound for me having grown up in places like Penzance and Helston near the sea in Cornwall where the seagulls were as common as the red kites and the robins and the blackbirds are around here big orange slug. Another dead bit of old farm machinery here. I wonder what on earth that was. I reckon it might be a harrow of some kind because if you can imagine it's no longer folded in half but actually open up into like a big sheet of metal with sort of crisscross panels. Every so often you've got a downward facing spike. Look there's one there and there's one there and I reckon those dragged across the surface to lift off the last of the grass and things. I think that was a, an old harrow at one point. But now, it's just a part of rust. That's it for today. Toodle pip.